Well, hello YouTube. Today we're going to talk about the difference between the Dakota 500 HGs and the Shimano TR100G, also known as the Shimano Triton. you can see I got new reels but I'm going to tell you a story I just had to go to the Home Depot and I need to get some more of these everybody asked me where do you get those where do you get those things well you go to the Home Depot I'll show you well, I got a razor blade right here Oop. All right, this is going to be an unedited video. I'm not doing a lot of editing anymore. It's a pain in the ass. And it... These are overpriced cable ties with the hoe in them. It's got the hoe in them. And I go through these like crazy because they do get kind of bleached out in the sun. And while I was in Home Depot, I had to wait to do self-checkout, which is always wonderful when you have to wait to help yourself. And I just was finishing up and a guy walks up to me to use the whatever the self-checkout thing and he says, oh, sport fishing, huh? And I said, yeah. And he said, where do you keep your boat? I said, in my driveway. Oh, oh, okay. I said, I know, everybody thinks, everybody who fishes has a giant sport fish boat with a tower and, and all that stuff, and they keep it in the water. And he goes, yeah, yeah, they do, they do. Uh, he says, well, what is yours, 22 or something? I said, no, it's a 26-foot boat. And he goes, oh, oh, sport fishing, huh? And I said, yeah, the reason I call it sport fishing is because there's limits basically on everything. And 90% of the time, I mean, you're doing it for the sport of it. And he looks at me and he goes, well, you know, that's good for the fish, and it's good for other people. I'm thinking, yeah, until I take you and your family and you complain that you didn't catch nothing big enough or anything to keep. That's how it always works in the charter fishing business. Whatever people think, well, then all of a sudden it's the opposite. Just like this guy's thinking, I got some giant sport fish boat sitting in the St. John's River getting crapped on by all the birds and having all the bottom needing to be scraped and painted. Oh my God, I wouldn't have any of that. So I thought that was kind of interesting while I was in the Home Depot picking up these because I have these tsunami rods with the anti foul guides and i had two more so i wanted to put two more shimano takotas on them and then what do i do i take this okay let's see this is awful i'm in a little tight spot here in my wolf den room and i take this and put it down by the real seat Okay, and zip it on there. Let's put that on. And why do I use this? Because it's a hook hanger. It's a hook hanger. And I don't want, I don't care. <clears throat> there we go. I don't care if these got stainless steel anti foul guides, which I absolutely love. These tsunami rods, I've got a bunch of star rods that are the same. 
pretty much indestructible and I use these a lot pretty much this time of year because when you drop anything to the bottom this time of year and from here on out you do not know what you could possibly hook and I'm taking people who might not necessarily be super duper anglers here's what I do with this I cut it real short ooh that went flying I cut it real short there it is sitting on there and I just had a subscriber over here at my house picking up a an ugly stick that I had one left of that I was selling and getting rid of because I got these which are tougher and then I take my strong arm rig that stays on my rods all the time and I put it on there and if I if I had a hook attached to the strong arm rig with a leader I put the hook there because I don't want hooks scraping up eyes no matter what eyes I have on a rod even though these pretty much are you know super durable but why am I getting more of these Takotas versus just using my I'll show you I got no space to move here but versus my good old standbys which are my Shimano Triton 100s here it is the hook hanger over here there's the strong arm rig just as I said if I don't have a leader on it I just put the hook in there why are not using these well number one they're kind of slow 4.3 to 1 or something like that and I like to keep the smaller handles on them anymore these reels here are the Timex of all Timexes. They just, they don't corrode, they, nothing. But on the Dakotas, unlike these, these, the drag, the drag, star drag, just turns and it has no ticking and no major resistance on it. All right, so these are on my Tiger ugly stick tigers so why do I want these well I bought two I liked them so then I bought more and now I think I pretty much have like eight of these okay I got them off of eBay oh the subscriber Vlad who just came over my house earlier today to pick up an ugly stick jigging rod in which I had one left of he wanted something for doing the big bull reds and stuff like that. I was describing to him the reason that, you know, the even if prices don't go up in anything, you know, they're going to raise prices just because of it's that inflation and recession. But I mean, these used to be relatively, you know, affordable. Oh, geez, there's the, the bat phone. All oh, right, when I said I wasn't going to do any editing on this video, some dude asking for six to eight passengers. I told him, I said, man, you better find one hell of a big boat. All right, where was I? Where was I? I was talking about the Dakotas. The reason I like these over the Tritons is because this, these rods, the style of fishing that we do, I mean, that Tiger Rod and the Triton, that's a super beater rod and reel. These, this time of year, you don't know what you're going to get when you drop to the bottom. Uh, you could drop a shrimp to the bottom and come up with a goddamn 100-pound black tip very, very soon. Okay, so these got a little higher gear ratio, 6.3 to 1. Not that you always want high gear ratios with big fish, but 
They hold a buttload of line. They got a power handle already. They got a little, you know, the Tritons, what makes those Shimano Tritons so special is the fact that they have no bearings. They got one roller bearing right in here, and that is it. They've got bronze bushings in them. These have bearings. These cast a little better. They're a little smoother, and they're palmable, okay, of the way. These are the newer Takotas. The old Takotas were round. These are the newer ones, and I really liked them. So far, I've used them on bull reds, and the other day, we used them. This exact rod and reel, we used it for Dragon the hardware, the old planers and spoons for Spanish mackerel. And they seem to work. And they're just a little step up from the old Tritons. The Tritons are my Timex. Maybe I want a Seiko. Maybe I want to try something a little different. What I'm a little sketchy about is, since these are big time summer rods and reels, I'm a little sketchy about hands covered in that god dang sunscreen anymore i see people slathering that crap on especially the spray that has tons of alcohol in it uh, i make them wash their hands with uh soap and water i really do because i had at one time which is very similar to this reel this dakota is a Daiwa lexa 300 and believe it or not, those I use those reels for years for float rig fishing, pretty much float rig fishing, which is super light tackle stuff. And people are palming them all the time. And believe it or not, right up here on the Daiwas, and this ain't poo poo and Daiwa by any means. I love me Daiwa, but I I bounce back and forth between Daiwas and Shimano's, Daiwas and Shimano's. But these Lexas, the paint was literally coming off up here. And somebody said, either on YouTube or, you know, in the comments or somebody on my boat said, you know, there's a damn good possibility the paint's coming off because of all the sunscreen on people's hands. And man, I got to thinking, yeah, probably. Because you got sweaty hands covered with that alcoholic, you know, sunscreen and all that stuff. And they're rubbing on the reels and the paint was coming off. Well, I hope this doesn't happen on these Shimano Dakotas. I have never seen that happen before, but it happened on the Daiwa Lexus, the Lexa 300s. So I can do about anything with these rods and reels. Um, they're, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty stiff. They got a good amount of eyes. They're really cheap. They were cheap uh, rods, but they're durable. And they're a little more flexible than the star rods that I have that have the anti-foul guides. The stars are the real sweethearts, but they're, they're way stiffer. These are a seven foot, one piece heavy action. Uh, let's see can't read it. Hell, my glasses are right here. Two to six ounces, I believe is what these are. Yeah, two to six ounce, 25 to 50 pound line. And I just happened to luck into these tsunami rods. I mean, these are meat movers. These are serious meat movers. They come with a plastic gimbal. Um, I just happened to run into these and then I called the rep. And I got the whole story on him. And he's like, oh, we can't even sell those. Nobody wants those. We don't even, I don't even know why they had them made. Well, I said they had them made for people like me. So these are a good fit for these rods. And if I wanted to drop back, I could make these into float rig fishing. Because I always like a five to one gear ratio and above for float rig fishing. Because then you can burn your float back relatively quick without turning the handle so many times.
But I'm going to try these out. I've been using them. I had two or three or four of them. And now I believe I'm up to eight. As I said, I charterized them. And what I do is I go down here into Worm Gear and I put in some Lucas Red Waterproof Grease. I back off all the screws and put a little lube in there because those salty hands, who the heck knows what's going to happen to these screws. Every one of these screws did have Loctite on them though. I have to say, I was very surprised. Every one of these has a dab of blue Loctite everywhere. Even that little set screw on the handle. So these really work. They're very fast. They're light. You can get them bigger. This is the 500 series. They, they come a lot bigger. I don't know why you would ever need anything bigger than this. I mean, I guess if you're one of those kitty cat fishermen and they think they need marlin tackle for catching a fish that don't even fight. I mean, already we've had, you know, reds and stuff on this that will just absolutely smoke this damn spool. So that's my little take on these. And that's my little story about being in Home Depot. But that's where you can make yourself a hook hanger. Believe it or not, I'm so anal that I'll show you. I'm sort of so anal that I'm looking forward to these white ones breaking because they break from just getting bumped and everything else and bleached in the sun. And then I'm going to replace them, of course, with these black ones. These are general or uh, commercial electric 100 pack. Uh, eight inch mounting cable ties. I used to call them bulkhead hangers because you can take you can take a you know a wire, zip it, tighten it up, and then run a screw into a bulkhead, you know, into a into a board or in your boat, whatever. So this hundred ought to ought to do me for quite a while. So that's where you get them. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon and everywhere else, too. And all at the same time, I got me all matching blue new reel covers for these because uh, your reel should be covered. I try to keep them from baking in the Florida sun. You can get these, uh, they're called KUFAs, K-U-F-A. There's a guy that sells these in bulk packs on eBay. Really uh, a value priced in bulk packs. Um, he's up in, uh, I think he's up in Washington State. Every time I order them, I get them within days, it seems, because he always sends them priority. But that's, how do you figure out what size? Believe me, it took me quite a while to figure out what size. Now I cut, oh man, I cut all the tags off of them. Let's see, here's the same size, but brown. Oh, I cut the tag off of this too. So basically these, I, he calls them B60s or something bait casting 60s and that's what fits on the Shimano Tritons and it fits very well on the Shimano uh, Dakotas here. I'll show you it fits like a glove. I keep my reels with covers. I mean heck they're sitting under a damn giant ass top. But still, they can get sun on them. And I'm trying to protect them from the salt. Here's what people say when they get on, on my boat many times. Oh, man, you cover your reels? And I go, yeah, it saves me about a six months in maintenance. When I would normally have to clean them up, 
and lube them and do stuff like that, maybe break them down even. I won't have to do that for an extra six months because I keep a cover on them, keep the sun off them, keep the salt off of them. So even if I was in fresh water, I'd do the same thing because the sun is so damaging. Believe it or not, I know because I'm a walking skin cancer victim here. So that's the story. I said I was going to talk about the Shimano Dakota 500 HG, meaning high gear. You might want to, I mean, you might want to have the power gear instead of the high speed. But I just go high speed. What the hell? Use them. Uh, I don't know if these are ball bearing or not, this, these handles. They could be. They feel pretty good. But... I got these off of an eBay seller who had a bunch of them and had best offer or make an offer or whatever that is called. <clears throat> these are running basically about 200 bucks anymore, but I bought two at one time. So I gave him kind of a low, low offer and he went, yeah, okay, fine. And they, they shipped, uh, I don't know probably took four days maybe I think they were from New Jersey so there you go that's just a little tip and the Shimano Dakotas are worth it if you want something a step up from something like the old the old uh, Shimano Tritons if you want to step up and you want a bigger handle, you want a little faster, the, like the drags on these, they tick. That's a big deal. Because when somebody's got on a big fish, I'm looking at the spool. When somebody's reeling in a big fish or something, I'm looking at the spool to see if they're even gaining any line. Because you know a lot of people just turn the handle. They don't know how to work a fish with the rod, right? And I'm looking at the spool and if I want to tighten or drag a little bit, I can hear it just go little couple ticks, just a couple ticks. That's going to be another pound, half pound of drag pressure probably. Just a couple ticks. The problem is on these, there's no sound, there's no nothing. And many times people are bumping these all the time and it backs off all the way. And I see them turn. Reeling in a little dinky fish. And the drag is, is so loose. I mean, because, you know, a lot of people, they just don't know. That's the reason I'm teaching them. I mean, a charter isn't just to go catch fish. A charter, even if I went on one with somebody else, I am going to leave with learning something that I did not know before. That's what it is. Yeah, it's sport fishing because anymore, it's not fill the freezer. It's not fill the freezer anymore, especially inshore. I mean, you can get some fish, but with me, you better, you got to catch them yourself. I mean, huh, that's the way it works. So these are on eBay. Look up real covers. You'll see these blue or these brown and they're called Kufa, K-U-F-A. Next time you're doing your honeydew and you're having to go through Home Depot, now you can get these in smaller packs. I bought a hundred pack because I just keep running out of them. And like I said, I'm so anal that when these white ones break, I'm gonna change them to black because I just like the black better. And these really work out for not sticking hooks and lures in eyes. Why do people think eyes are for sticking hooks in. It's because they don't know. But don't do it on my boat because I am immediately going to turn that hook down to the hook hanger. Not all rods have hook hangers. This is a dirt cheap way of putting on a hook hanger. So that's it. Uh, I don't have anything else to cover. Oh, on the Dakotas, one thing about a Shimano drag, it's as smooth as a baby's butt. And that's another thing I like when you're doing real big fish, big reds, 
We could be out there. You could hook a damn black tip on one of these. Who knows when you're at the jetties. Okay. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on the next one. I, I don't know what I'm going to be doing next. That's the whole thing. I got appointments and appointments and appointments and who knows what coming up. I'm still suffering from my kidney stones thing over a month ago. Over a month ago. And Monday, I go get an ultrasound. And I'm still hurting back here a little bit. Then, after that, I mean, I got, let's see, what else? Uh, I got uh, always getting like not ear infections, but sinus infections and stuff. So I got like got to go to an ear, nose, and throat doctor. So it's all kinds of crap going on. But either way, that has nothing to do with fishing. That's for sure. Ain't stopping me from going fishing. Hell, I've been out on the boat and passing kidney stone out on the boat. So with customers, that was brutal. But I made it through the day. And we caught a bunch of fish, too. I'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by.